So Unity backtracked and the CEO is actually stepping down. Did we just win? I wanted to make a quick follow-up video from my previous video talking about Unity's new kind of crazy pricing model change to try and close out this whole, let's say, interesting chapter in the game development sphere. In one sentence, Unity, again, the company that makes the Unity game engine that's used by tons of game developers, following a crazy pricing model change that I outlined in my last video, reflected on the feedback they got, released a new revision of their pricing policy, and as of today, their CEO is actually stepping down. First, what is this policy and is it actually any better? The initial policy they released, which caused all of this drama in the game development world, was this 20 cent fee structure that was all based on the number of game installs you had once you passed a certain threshold. And this threshold depended on the license that you had and the number of game installs and revenue that you accumulated. If you want more details on that, I did a big deep dive in my previous video. Unity faced massive backlash both from small and large game developers, studios, and publishers. So in response, they released a new policy. First, if you have the Unity personal license, which is their free tier, there will be no runtime install fee, which is what the new fee was supposed to be called. In addition, the 100k revenue limit for the personal tier is being increased to 200k. Additionally, you will no longer have to include the Made with Unity splash screen if you use the long-term support version of Unity that's releasing in 2024. I think they added this optional splash screen option because Unity got such a bad public perception from this change, they were worried that maybe players would potentially boycott games that were made in the Unity game engine, or just have a generally negative association with that game. And as an indie game developer, the very last thing I want is for a player to have a subconscious bias against my game before they even reach the menu. Now, if you have the Unity Pro or Enterprise license, or essentially if you have revenue over $200,000, putting you over the Unity personal license threshold, the following will apply. So first, no fee will apply for games created with any currently supported version of Unity, only games created or upgraded to the long-term support version releasing in 2024. This is a huge change from their previous announcement where they were talking about potential retroactive application of the new pricing model install based qualification type deal. Now the splash screen change is an interesting one. Essentially, if you're on the free tier and you want to remove the Unity splash screen, you have to upgrade to the 2024 Unity version, which would then make you eligible for the Unity runtime fee. Again, giving you past the threshold. Versus if you don't upgrade, you have to keep the splash screen but you would not be eligible for the fee. I believe you can also remove the splash screen if you upgrade to the Unity Pro version anyway, which costs, I think, about $2,000 per year. Unity also called out that you will be able to stay on the terms of use for the version of the Unity engine you're currently using, as long as you keep using that version. So if you're using Unity 2019, the terms of service for the 2019 version will apply to you and not the terms of service for, say, the 2024 version. Then in terms of what the actual new runtime Time fee is, which again to qualify you would have had to make over $200,000 in revenue and be on the new 2024 Unity version. So you will pay the minimum of either 2.5% revenue share, which is calculated on a monthly basis, or the fee calculated from the previous model based on unique initial engagements, which is what they're calling it. And they said you'd always be billed the lesser amount, which means that you'd at most be paying a 2.5% revenue share. And a very important part of this is that it's all self-reported. So there was a huge concern that Unity would be installing some sort of spyware in their runtime software that would be able to count the unique number of installs for their prior pricing model. They have now said that this will all just be self-reported. So I'm assuming that's for both the revenue threshold and the initial engagements threshold. So those are really the main changes for the Unity Engine's new pricing model, or I guess their new new version of their pricing model. So based on my previous video, it did seem like they tried to address many of the concerns the user base had. So I do obviously think that this is definitely better than the previous pricing model, but it is still more than what the original pricing model was just a couple of months ago. Again, I mentioned in the previous video, I really like the Unity engine as a technology, but their previous pricing model change just absolutely decimated their public perception. And I do believe this retraction and policy change is a move in the right direction. I just don't know if it's enough to regain the trust of their user base. Despite this retraction, I still see many indie game developers specifically moving from Unity to other engines like Godot and Unreal. Now less based on the fee structure 
structure and more just on the public trust aspect of it. Now, the fact that the CEO is actually stepping down is potentially another move to try and regain some of the customer trust they had lost, which is honestly surprising to see. To see a large tech company actually change their pricing model in response to user feedback and have the CEO step down, it's pretty rare to see, I think. So I just wanted to make this quick video to try and put a little bow on the whole Unity pricing model change. But I am curious, what are you planning to do? Is this new retraction and change of the policy combined with the CEO stepping down, is that enough for you to stay or move to the Unity game engine? Or have you completely lost all trust? Let me know down in the comments. My name is Michael. We do bad British accents at the end of every video. I'm working on some other videos including game development trends in the market right now, some devlogs, as well as my impressions of Godot. So stay tuned for all of that. That's all for me, and hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.